Hello, everyone, and welcome to another unranked review, this time for Windjammers 2. I am joined by Christian Humes, fellow host and producer of the Unranked podcast. We've been playing some Windjammers, both solo and against each other. Obviously, a very uh, big part of the game is the multiplayer. So instead of doing just a scripted review, I did want to have a discussion with Chris about how we feel about the game. Um, yeah, so Chris, how much have you been playing? You've been you've been playing a lot, it sounds like. Uh, and do you <laughs> like Windjammers too? I love it. I love this game. Um, I mean, the second we started playing... You know, you brought up with me, you're like, oh, you used to play this. And I was like, well, no, I have played this. It, mm. This is a game that was slightly before both of our times. Um, you know, like arcades were kind of on the outs already once I was old enough to possibly like go to them on my own or, you know, get around to them. You know, everything had turned into like a Chuck E. Cheese sort of a experience. There weren't as many traditional arcades. Um, and, and that's with me even being in my 30s. You know, I'm not uh, one of these youngins such as yourself. That being said... I've played it on like a main cabinet. I doubt it was even like an original, you know, cabinet that I played it on. But this this game, the second I started playing it, I mean, I was I was messaging you and I was saying, boy, I wish controllers had like six buttons or I wish mm. I had a fight stick. Uh, and I found myself on Amazon ordering a fight stick. I've got a Mayflash, <laughs> I've got a Mayflash fight stick coming in. Um, I'm very excited for it. But yeah, man, it immediately just felt like what I remembered, which is it, it, it's like Street Fighter Pong, mm. which is sick. It's a yeah. it's a great game. Visually, I love it. Um, and I really think, and I'm just kind of just jumping right in with this, but sure. I really think the only knock I have against this game is that they were so uh, specifically true to the source material that they didn't include anything, I think, that would help onboard people that are not used to an arcade video game experience. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think that's also my biggest critique and that, to me kind of manifests in the learning of the game. Um, you know, when you go to these arcades, the way that they have you learn is just by playing. And right. you, uh, you do get you do get instructions. That's how they get that coin. But it's not actual tutorials. Like in this game, it is simply just screens that say this does this, this does that. And which in the past, that's the kind of thing that would be on the side of like the arcade cabinet. You know, you, sure, you'd see yeah. like <laughs> like direction plus button yeah. does this direction down does that or it'd be like rotating through those screens, possibly like while it's in idle mode. And I found I found those instructions to be only minimally helpful. Yeah. Again, what what really kind of gets you to understand the game inch by inch, like you're not making, I think, huge strides in terms of becoming a wind jammer master. It is slow. Progress. I mean, it's fun, right? All the matches are fun. And I do think that where the game shines for me was when we, you and I played together. Because I felt even on the easy mode in single player, I was just getting my ass handed to me constantly. Um, which, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment in a lot of games. Like, I'm a fan of Souls games. And, like, so I, I was enjoying it. And I did want to play, play more and get better. But this is not... Yeah, it is so true to that arcade experience that you are not... Um, you know, they don't give you like a beginner match and then they pause the game and it's like, okay, now press this button to knock it back. Yeah. And you have a perfectly timed opportunity to do that. You have to learn by playing. So I feel that like um, a lot of people might bounce off of it because uh, that's, of that. That's my really only concern is that with the lack of a true tutorial to teach players how to play the game, uh, there's going to be people that are going to pick it up, get absolutely annihilated and not, <laughs> they're going to put it down and never pick it, this game back up again. hundred percent. Um, which is unfortunate because the gameplay is very deep. It's really satisfying once yeah. you start to understand it and know how to play it. Uh, and I was getting, I was getting my ass handed to me when we were, when I was playing against the computer. And once you and I started playing each other, I feel like I walked away much better at the 100%. game 100 percent, because we were just like on a more even playing field we were able yes. to get volleys in that i was not able to accomplish against the computer so i heavily suggest if you are picking up wind jammers to find someone to play with um to help you kind of work through the mechanics of it um yeah i found that uh, incredibly incredibly helpful yeah convince a friend to play if you're on game pass if you're on xbox you could just play you know 
if you have a friend that's on Xbox, get a buddy, just force them to download. It won't cost them anything, but you, you definitely want to play against another. And look, you can you can just go and, and person, play the right? computer. It's that's just going to be a slower burn because you're yeah. just going to be getting <laughs> loss after yeah, loss very on, quickly even on easy it's it's still yeah. uh it's still difficult um yeah and i think that um you know i think that that again i was just looking at the price of this it's only 20 bucks which i think is perfectly priced for this especially i, if, I totally agree if you do get into it you're going to get your money's worth um i i do think that again it's so true to that arcade style experience that it is very bare bones in terms of the content you know it yes. is just like online multiplayer the arcade mode playing against the computer there is nothing um, that doesn't seem like there's any room for any any other kind of like weird mode or um, anything like that. I also feel that like I enjoy the maps and different court styles quite a bit, and they all have different variations. Uh, one in particular is this court that instead of like having just like a traditional net, I guess, across the middle, it has these paddles that if the if the uh, disc hits them. Uh, it, it'll bounce off uh, or flip into the air. Yeah. And uh, there's one in particular where those paddles move if you knock them. So this that, that might be my them. favorite one. I, so. I think it is my favorite. Uh, there's also a cool one, uh, the casino, which yep. is, um, you know, all of the different maps, the, the space behind where you have to hit uh, the Frisbee, uh, it, the, 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 the pricing, the score, the score changes depending on the map. And then the casino one, uh, it's all one number, but it changes to a random like one through eight, I think, is something something like that. The point scoring. So the the maps are very interesting. I hope that they add more because I feel like oh, no, man. Yeah, <laughs> it took them. It took them a long time to get this sure, game. out. That's very it took true. them a really long time to to make this game. Um, I play I demoed this at PAX East 2020 right before the pandemic. Right. Which was and previously already like already been working yeah. on it for so long by that point so speaking of working on it for a long time so i watched dot mu the people who made this game they they made a little documentary on the making of it and mm -hmm. um it is much more actually the documentary about the original than anything mm -hmm. but what was so fascinating is that because the game was on neo geo that's what it was developed and made on it didn't have like a physics engine that's like how old this was so everything was hard coded so anything that happened you know it's like some form of like a probability there wasn't like physics for the disc so when they built this game they kind of tried to follow suit with that and they looked at the old code and figured out how everything was made and they they built this game essentially from the ground up to be as true to it as possible. But in that, they then were like, okay, well, how do we make it as a sequel if these people were making the game today? So some of the changes are actually the things that I like the most in this game. Mm -hmm. So the original game only had six players. They added four. And the two classes that they added to the characters are the super light and the super heavy characters. Mm -hmm. The super light characters were the ones that I found I'm best with. And I mm -hmm. actually would recommend Same. if you're playing this game for the first time, that's who you should go with because it gives you they the ability you to, to get the frisbee more. Yes, exactly. Like, you when can you pick get up the, the disc frisbee, faster. When you get the frisbee as the power characters, you kind of are like, you're so, you know, you're fucked the other person because they can throw it really hard. But getting to the frisbee with those power characters is like <laughs> it was so much yeah. more difficult. And you, it, it really is a lot. I think the first step to playing this game well is learning how to read the frisbee, the disc. Like you got to learn how to read the disc where it's going to go. So having that fast character kind of helps you in the interim until you're good enough. Mm -hmm. um, so I was playing as a super light character. Now I've I've moved back into I'm like ready. just the one tier above it after I after I beat it on easy and I'm uh, I got to the championship match earlier today on normal but I didn't beat it but I'm going to I'm hoping to do it later today. Um I'm really excited about getting this fight stick man. But <laughs> the the other thing they've added to the game is actually all of the like the jumps, the slap shots, the drop shots, which that's that's where I live in this game. That's my bread and butter. The thing I kept doing to you when we were playing is all I've practiced other than recovering the disc is timing the B hit so that when the disc comes to you, you can actually hit it up into the air and then you can jump up and you can do like a spike shot. You can yeah. slap the disc back. There's a, a bunch of different options for that. And once I started to learn how to do that, that was like, okay, I'm going to get really good at this one thing. And so I haven't really been focused on doing much else, like really getting my like super moves down or anything. I'm just focused on that, but now I can do it really reliably. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's one awesome. of the, I think one of the things for me because obviously we're on the cusp of a ton of big games coming out. Um, so I I see you know us and I picking up and playing it quite a bit. But one thing that I really hope happens is like professional wind jammers too, because watching that <laughs> and like even just watching like actual pros go at it like i'm very excited yeah. to I, I, yes. I i hope that becomes like a kind of underground esports scene for this game because i think that you know the amount of different things that you can do with uh the characters and um you know i was kept finding myself surprised <laughs> by the number of times something would happen i was like i didn't even know you could do that i don't even know how that happened you know <laughs> well, it, he, yeah. here's something as far as that's concerned because mm. i actually believe you know maybe it won't happen right away but once it gets on twitch it gets in the hands of the right you know esports players etc i think this game will have legs and the reason for that is i i think it's just as good as the original uh again i i am talking from very limited experience with the original but um that, you know they've improved in some ways by adding new features new characters the the levels are also by the way the play field is larger which is part of why they can do those new uh like jump shots and slap shots because the old game is four by three now it's 16 by nine so they actually made the play field bigger so that's mm -hmm. how they were able to add that into the game yeah. uh and that's why also now it's like oh we'll make an even faster character because we have a larger play field so those things actually kind of all work together in like, well, the board's bigger. What can we do now as well with the characters and with these abilities? But um, when the original was out it, in uh, America in 1994, it was ranked the 14th most popular arcade game in the US. Um, and it was like one of the number, like, like top 20 in Japan as well. And like, what's funny is if you go on Wikipedia, it has, there's old reviews from places like <laughs> edge and um, oh my god i mean it's like the the lowest review i'm seeing on here is like a 74 but there's there there are a lot of like very high uh review scores edge is actually sorry the edge is the lowest edge gave it a five out of ten but that was on the neo geo uh i mean this was on the neo geo cd it was on arcade so obviously we're talking about something that like it was lived in a different ba era. Yeah, back in the day, uh, building a, an arcade game and importing <laughs> it over to console was not the no, uh, not the smoothest of transitions. No, yeah, and, and yet uh, you it's know, still beloved. Yeah, one hundred. Yeah, and I, I think that that probably stems from the the actual arcade experience. You know, one of the things we also talked about that I that I loved is the art style. I think this game is oh. beautiful. You know, if you if you played Streets of Rage four, which was Dotemu's, um, uh, you know, latest. Uh, biggest latest biggest game uh which was a continuation of streets of rage like the modern high res adaptation and you know bringing to life in in a, in a modern way those old graphics like they've done the same here with with wind jammers i want more games to look like this i am so stoked uh because this is the yeah. same team that is doing the tmnt shredders revenge yes which which, which i'm very excited oh about God. very excited about that <laughs> i was already and, stoked <laughs> and look here's here's the beautiful thing about that right yeah we we just we finally i think are coming out on the other side of the um retro style going out of fashion like the 8-bit style where you know, look, some people were like, oh, we're going to use a modern art style, but we're going to kind of design it to look like an 8-bit game, or we're going to limit ourselves to actual like 8-bit color palettes, etc. We're now moving into more of like a 16-bit Super Nintendo area mm -hmm. now when it comes to like remakes. We just got that River City Girls game. That game was great, but they stuck with the like, what does a modern pixel art kind of look like today? And that's why I'm loving seeing this new, like, we're going to be faithful to that 16 bit era design but instead we're going to actually like use today's artwork and and translate that um it looks incredible and it's not just the main characters there's so many people like in the audience like that are cheering yeah. there's like there's little mascots and stuff that are at, and like coaches that are like behind each player as well which are really cool yeah um there's a ton of design that went yeah, into those even even the stuff like the um even the like uh, court select screen and the way that like the character is animated there and the art style there, uh, you can tell like, I, you know, I think a lot of that is hand drawn and like 
even when it pushes in on the right so you pick the court you want and it pushes in on the character and you get really close to them doing like this really uh goofy um <laughs> uh kind of pose and also like the 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 ce celebration poses at the end of the match you've got a ton of like numbers and things coming up uh on the screen showing you like how you performed or or you know and the continue button is up on the screen but you can see in the background like the characters like cheering like i did it or like the losing character like defeated there's just so much uh incredible attention to detail every time something new always catches my eye that I did not notice before. And yeah, I think that this game is like so polished. Um, yeah. And it and has, I, so, it, it oozes style. Mm -hmm. Oozes, oozes style. style. And, you know, it's kind of that thing of like, well, you know, I, 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 I want a lot of people to get on, on this and I really want this to be a, a huge success for them. Um, but then, you know, making it more accessible, you know, it's that age old like thing that we talk about with like souls games now, like, making it more accessible for people like is that diluting the experience and so they need way. some uh ps5 cards some activity cards <laughs> yes 100 percent. right i wonder if uh if the uh the ps5 version will because uh maybe we'll have to check that out um yeah final thoughts chris on wind jammers 2 uh i i i love this game i i think it's great i really think outside the only complaint i have is that they do a poor job of teaching players who are unfamiliar with it how to play the game and even players who might be familiar with it but never um got a grasp on it how mm -hmm. to play the game that's really the only complaint i have but then again you could say the same thing about street fighter 2 one of the best video games yes. i've ever played in my life sure. and i would never hold that against street fighter 2 um so i really don't feel like i can hold it against this game it just doesn't come with the same pedigree um so you know if if you're unhappy with that and you play it you know i, I won't blame anyone for kind of bouncing off of it for that reason i think that, that that's like a slight disservice it did to itself but otherwise they made the exact game they wanted to make they improved on it in every possible way and you know maybe I'm, maybe i'm wrong maybe, maybe that there is like a hunger for this and and we will see it explode i i've been seeing and also i think that there is a lot of love for wind jammers and yeah. you know even myself who you know again like like you said so young so so very young uh you know <laughs> not uh, playing it back in the day but knowing the knowing the game like I, it's just something that i know and so i think that like there could be a perfect storm there for people to um really pick this up and 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 uh and and, and love it um well thanks chris for chatting uh for everyone else uh make sure to subscribe to the channel tons of games coming out yep. um uh tons of reviews tons of interesting talks so make sure to subscribe to the channel check out the unranked podcast uh wherever you enjoy podcasts um chris where can people find you uh i'm at christian underscore humes and of course the unranked podcast Fantastic. And I am Great Britom on each and every platform. And until next time, guys, stay unranked.